Tiny microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria are found everywhere in the natural world. While several microorganisms can cause dangerous infections, most of them act as vital partners, so-called symbionts. Microorganisms ensure a functioning metabolism, proper development and protection by producing essential nutrients and active substances such as antibiotics. Christina Bemelmann's research group at the Hans Knoll Institute in Jena is investigating which biological and chemical factors play important roles in beneficial interactions between microorganisms and animals and allow their long-term survival. My research group focuses on the analysis of symbiotic bacteria, in particular the metabolites these symbiotic bacteria produce. And we are interested in how they influence the life cycle or lifestyle of higher organisms. And for that, we have chosen one very old and also well-known model system, the model system of Hydractinia echinata. And that is an organism which lives in the northern uh, sea and is also a representative model system for many other marine organisms living in the ocean. And here we are particularly interested in the morphogenesis or the life cycle of this organism and how it transforms from a larvae, a mobile larvae, to the sessile adult. Like corals, the hydroid polyp Hydractinia is a cnidarian. Like many other marine invertebrates, the hydroid polyp passes through different stages in its life cycle. While adult and sexually mature organisms grow on certain snail shells and reproduce there, their fertilized eggs develop into swimming larvae that explore new habitats. Once a planular larva finds a suitable habitat, it changes into an adult polyp and the life cycle ends. However, if a suitable place is not found, most larvae starve to death within a few days. But what exactly are the criteria that define a suitable habitat and initiate the life-changing transformation process not only for Hydractinia, but also for many other marine organisms. And what role do the shell, the hermit crab and microorganisms play in this delicately balanced life cycle? To find answers to these fundamental questions, the biologists and chemists are working closely with the mudflats centre of the Alfred Wegener Institute in Liszt on the island of Zult. Germany's most northerly research facility is only a few steps away from the mudflats and, with its modern research infrastructure, offers an ideal starting point for marine research work. The mudflats are the natural habitat of hermit crabs and the spiny polyp Hydractinia that grows on their shells. Finding Hydractinia covered shells requires a lot of patience as they are constantly being carried around by hermit crabs in the search for food. The climatic changes of the last few decades have also affected their growth rates and occurrence and those of other marine organisms in the North Sea. On average, the annual water temperature has increased by about 1.5 degrees Celsius since 1984. That is roughly comparable to the situation on Helgoland that is relatively close to here. It is interesting that the main temperature increase actually occurs in autumn and extends further into the winter. Overall, this has strong repercussions for the whole ecosystem. During the past few years, researchers at the Alfred Wegener Institute have been able to show that particularly organisms that tolerate higher temperatures, such as the Pacific oyster, have started to make Zulp their home. Increased water temperatures are also powerfully affecting the growth and prevalence of most organisms in the long term. For long-term climatic and biological studies, Fish and plankton samples, as well as geological and climatic measurements, are collected at regular intervals on board the research vessel Maya 2. 
Samples and biological material for research and teaching are also collected and taken to the research station on dry land. To collect hydractinia in its natural habitat, snail shells inhabited by hermit crabs and overgrown with a polyp colony are collected in small trawls. The hydractinia samples are documented and are prepared for transportation. Back in the laboratory at the Alfred Wegener Institute, Christina Bemelmann's scientists start to collect microbiological samples and prepare the collected species for transport to Jena for long-term studies. While direct measurements allow an ecological snapshot, long-term studies will enable the scientists to gain better insight into the interactions between the microorganisms and the polyp. Back at the Hans Knoll Institute, hydractinia colonies are kept in marine aquariums for microbial and molecular biological studies. Here we see our model system, the Hydractinia echinata, which we brought from the Northern Sea to the laboratory where we can culture the organism under controlled conditions. And we can also change the conditions to see and monitor the microbiome or the changing microbiome of the organism to trace back its functionalities. So here you can see our two different setups. One is the hydroctinia, which is grown on the glass shell and is originally derived from the Northern American uh, coastline. And here we still have the uh, hydroctinia on the original uh, shells uh, collected uh, in the Northern Sea at Sylt. And we can now compare both conditions in the microbiome of the organism. As part of long-term studies, the scientists are monitoring the collected colonies in controlled conditions to better understand the diversity, dynamics and functions of the associated microorganisms and finally solve the mystery of why some bacteria are able to attract the searching larvae and induce the life-changing transformation into the adult organism. I mean, Manchester or the um, natural product produced by the isolated bacteria, um, which has the activity um, to protect the hydroctinia and induce the um, metamorphosis of hydroctinia larva. So we first incubate this bacteria, extract the um, uh, uh, secondary metabolite, and analyze by um, HPLC, LCMS. And finally, we um, isolate the compound from the large scale. Uh, cultivation and uh, separated by property HPLC and uh, characterizes the structure by MR and MS and some other chromatogram technique. Research during the past few years has shown that only a few bacteria produce the correct mixture of stimulating substances that induce the transformation into the adult organism. Although the exact mechanisms of this induction are still unknown, Christina Bemelmann's group is confident that it will solve the long-standing chemical biological puzzle. The analysis of the beneficial microbiome also allows the scientists to identify those bacteria that are essential and maintained by the hydractinia once the colony is developing. In my project, I want to uh, find the associated bacteria with hydrectinia, which helps uh, hydrectinia to colonize the hermit crab shells. For this, we need to isolate the genomic DNA from the hydrectinia polyps, eggs, and larvae, as well as some uh, environmental samples, such as sand samples or empty shells with no hydrectinia, to compare them and find those uh, important associated bacteria with hydrectinia. Here we have a box of the DNA, isolated DNA samples that we want to use this DNA to amplify the 16S rRNA fragments using the PCR machine. While microbial community studies make it possible to depict the diversity and adaptation of the microbiome over time, further genomic studies are leading to deeper insights into the protective and supporting functions of microbial symbionts. 
I want to know which bacteria live together with hydroctinia and where they are located. Are they, for example, in the tissue, between the cells, or do they only occur on the surface? To do this, I stain the bacteria in the hydroctinia with different fluorescent markers that are specific for certain groups of bacteria. Here, I have stained a hydroctinia polyp with different fluorescent markers for bacteria and also the nuclei of the hydroctinia cells. You can see that the bacteria are not only on the surface, but also inside the tissue. Although the research project led by Christina Bemelmans is just starting its work, the results clearly show how important beneficial microorganisms are for the survival of the individual polyps and the species as a whole. The combined knowledge of chemistry, microbiology and ecology will enable the scientists to not only solve the long-standing mystery of how hydractinia and other marine organisms such as corals and oysters have survived for millions of years, but also make the many identified bioactive compounds biotechnologically accessible so that humans can use them.